I was wondering why it wasn't coming up. There we go. All right. All right, so we'll pause that. Bring this up. Okay, do you want to put on any socials? Oh, we should be good there on auto. Okay. Okay, I'm going to start recording and then... Welcome once again to This Week in MCU. I'm Kurt, and with me as always is my partner, Sen Raven. Hey, how you doing hey, this week? good morning. I'm doing all right. Um, I don't know about you, man, but I am loving this series so far, and I'm really looking forward to... Uh, we're about the halfway point now, right? I mean... Uh, seems like it. Yeah, I think there's, I think there's six episodes, and I think we're, we're about yeah, the halfway point. I'm And I was in more, and I'm well, and I was hoping for more than six, but it looks like six might be the number. Yeah, and it looks like I okay, good. <laughs> My video just went a little wonky, so um, yeah, so uh, I think we're about the halfway point. Uh, they've certainly been pretty action packed episodes, and uh, I'm still liking it. I'm still liking it. I'm not, I, and I'm still amazed. I still think the production quality is movie quality, so. Yeah, this last episode definitely had me going, and, ooh, that's pretty. Yeah, yeah. So, all right. Um, so, if you like to follow the, the stream, you can go to twitch.tv slash VO by Kurt every Saturday morning, 10 o'clock Eastern time. That's 10 a.m. Uh, you can also get the podcast over on anchor.fm slash uh, slash this this dash week dash in dash MCU. Um, I was trying to get rid of the dashes. I couldn't do it yet. So, um, so uh, I don't have any specific news from around the Marvel Cinematic Universe this week. We we kind of covered a bunch of stuff last week. Uh, have you heard anything on your end? Uh, not particularly. Uh, mostly when I look for for news right now, everything's coming up as Winter Soldier. Right, right. So, okay, that's cool. Uh, so we can just jump right into it. Uh, this episode was called Power Broker, which um, I don't know about you. I haven't seen the titles of the episodes ahead of time. So, so when I when I started up episode three and it said Power Broker, I went, oh, okay, good. Let's just get into it. Alas. Let's just jump in feed first. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. We should probably say at the beginning of every episode. This is going to have spoilers. Oh, spoiler warning. Uh, please. Warning, yeah. Please go watch the episode before listening to this because we're not holding back. We're not going to try to dance around stuff. Um, it's going to be spoiler ridden. So, and with that, episode three, Power Broker, um, we find out that we don't get to meet the Power Broker. <laughs> not yet. No, we don't even see him. <laughs> We don't even see him, uh, and we can we can do a little speculation uh, later, but um, yeah, it's uh, we're definitely getting into it, right? So, all right, so let's see. We open the show with a global repatriation council commercial. Um, that whole thing made made me feel dirty, right? <laughs> it, it feels creepy as hell. Um, it just is, we want to help you. Did you come back from the blip? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And their, their if, tagline. If, if, if you've been back, if you've been back from the blip for more than four hours, please, please call your doctor. Right. And this might cause these other problems. Right. You might not have any food. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And their tagline <laughs> reset, restore, rebuild. Is just oh boy okay. So, so we we get that and then oh, so, hold, hold, oh hold, yeah hold, yeah hold, yeah hold. yeah yeah we for, we forgot one thing last week. What was that? We forgot one major thing last week is that Red Wing got broken. Oh, we, that's we true. Completely forgot to mention that last week. Because, yeah, because uh, that's kind of a big thing. 
Yeah, but, Red Wing yeah. was was broken in half last week on the tr- in yeah. the truck fight. Yeah, I, I forgot I, we didn't I, cover that. I realized <laughs> I realized that like three days later that we didn't even mention that he got broken <laughs> oh, because you get the nice little line of uh, of Bucky going so about sorry about Red Wing. No, you're not. Right. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, so so we get this opening, and then right after that, we get a shot of. Uh, what is it global repatriation Re- council yeah <laughs> right so uh, gpc and we get the shot of a, of a van that says gpc police, police. on it <laughs> yeah like, that's a great little uh, side by side on that so i got to tell you when 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 you see the grc police van and then cap gets out of it um yeah it 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 made me think of uh movies where they have the creepy one world government thing going on uh-huh. and and they control everything and it just it creeped me out <laughs> it creeped me out so uh so we get yeah cap and battlestar get out of the van and they're in germany and they're attacking that safe house where uh the flag smashers uh were given beds and and whatnot last time and uh we're in munich and Cap is like questioning the safe house dude, and he says, "I don't know." And and Cap goes, "It's bullshit. It's bullshit." And and I'm going, "Oh, potty mouth, Cap. He's, yeah, oh, the, he's gonna lose it." <laughs> yeah, the real Cap would not approve. Language, <laughs> right? And then and then the dude spits in Cap's face, and Cap flips out. Do you know who I am? I'm going. Oh, we're seeing. Yeah. We are seeing the breakdown of John Walker into be, basically com- becoming who he really is. Um, right. And I, I was listening to a couple other um, videos about the show, and one of the things that people had talked about was the difference is that Cap, the Shield, is a symbol about uh, about the ideals or you know that that he's protecting and with fake cap with john walker the shield is a symbol of power he can wield right because he's he's basically i am this person this is who who this is but that's not the point of it right right so um so cap's frustrated dude's not going to talk and the scene changes over to Sam and Bucky uh, in Berlin going to visit Simo, and because that's not like the most terrible idea you've ever had. Let's yeah. go see this guy that's in prison, and yeah. Oh, but you know the the idea gets even more terrible because Bucky says, "I I need to go see him alone." <laughs> <laughs> and and oh, the the fact that Sam goes along with it just goes like, "Really? Are you re- What is wrong with you?" Right, and then uh, well, but I think I think we we know that Bucky has an ulterior motive, uh, at, you know, late, later, right? So, um, and then what I loved, I loved this stupid little scene, but upon seeing Bucky, Zemo immediately tries to say the activation codes, like those are the first I, words out of his mouth, right. and and I'm like and, going, uh, oh, awesome, because you got to try. Right. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's supposed to, you know, he's a Sokovian, so, you know, it makes sense that his Russian is a little, you know, sideways. Right, right. Well, and come on, us us, uh, us only English-speaking people wouldn't know the difference. No, um, you English-speaking people <laughs> no, wouldn't know the no, difference. No, I, I said only, only English-speaking people. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, so the activation codes don't work. And, and again, I had to give Zemo props for trying. Yeah. Right, because because why wouldn't he try that? I would. <laughs> yeah, and and he's just like I just wanted to see how how the new you reacts to the old words, <laughs> and uh, when he's talking to Bucky and Bucky is like, "Hey, by the way, somebody's recreated the Super Soldier Serum," and Zemo legitimately looked a little surprised, which. Uh, made me a little curious and and especially since you get the feeling that bucky thinks hydra had something to do with it yeah well it makes sense that that's the the conclusion that you're gonna reach for right 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 exactly and so then you know so he gets done talking with with zemo and 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 uh bucky is back talking with with sam 
And well, b- before that, though, he asked him what the book is, and it's oh yeah, Machiavelli oh, the Prince. A, I, yep. I just thought that was a really nice touch. Right, because it's putting, all about putting, manipulation, putting, right? Yeah, put, putting <laughs> putting that line on Zemo is, is perfect. Yep, yep, that's true. It was very very cool. Nice little touch. Uh, so yeah, they're back in the hallway talking, and uh, Sam is learning that Bucky wants to break Zemo out, and Sam's going. <laughs> He killed King T'Chaka and framed you for it. Did you forget about that? He goes, the Wakandan sure, sure didn't. Oh, uh, yeah. a little foreshadowing there. Um, and Bucky starts going, well, let me walk you through a hypothetical, which is actually oh, yeah, hypothetical. <laughs> yeah, which is actually what he did. <laughs> which is, I I like when they do stuff like that because it's like, well, this could happen like this. Wait, right. no, it did happen like this. Right. And so what what was the thing that I had a question about, though, is when Zemo opened the Machiavelli book, he had a key card, like one of the guards' key cards right. for the for the prison. And I don't – Bucky had no way to get that to him. Uh, that, he might have been already working on a way to get out. I mean, right, right. He might have already had Zemo. it just waiting yeah. for uh, an opportunity to use it. Exactly. And then uh, – when he's walking through the hypothetical and Sam is like, what did you do? (laughs) And what's he doing here? Yeah. So Zemo has the key card in his book. Bucky creates chaos in the prison by just causing the inmates to fight by just handing one of them a little note that says the dude across from you is going to kill you. (laughs) Hey, you know, what's a good way to, you know, what, what, what is one line you can say that will always start a fight? Hey guys, you want to start a fight? Yeah, exactly. Uh, so yeah, and what's what what's interesting, you know, I will say they used a time honored trope, which is prison fight equals escape opportunity. So, uh, so that was that was a little, you know, a little on the nose, but even the what little they showed of how Zemo got out made sense in the way that that chaos was all working. Sure. Uh, so, uh, so that, so that's all cool. So, so Zemo, uh, you know, is, is, is escape. He escapes and Sam and Bucky had been talking in this, in this car, or this auto workshop and Zemo rolls in and, and Sam is just like going, okay, fine. Zemo, where do we start? And then we get the title. <laughs> After all that, we get the, we get the Falcon and the Winter Soldier title, uh, scroll. So, um, I, I noticed that pop up and it made me go, wait, did they do that in the previous episodes or is this just like the first time they did that? I think they did. I think they, I, I think they've, they've done some stuff ahead of time and then they, they roll it. Um, so, uh, and then we see the garage, right? And Zemo's got all of his antique cars that are there, which is, which are pretty cool. Um, he grabs his coat with the fur collar and his mask out of one of the cars and we see, Stuff in in one of his trunks. Uh, we see like a gold uh, pistol and just I'm, other. I'm so surprised they didn't take the gold pistols. Yeah, yeah. I I really wanted to see that outfit. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Um, so uh, and so, no sword. Where's the sword? Yeah, yeah. They didn't definitely didn't do the sword this time. So, uh, but basically he he says, all right, we're going to Madripoor and brings uh brings his private jet around and sam was like oh what you're rich he goes i'm called I'm a baron. baron i'm a baron <laughs> he, um but but we get it we get a little insight into the fact that sokovia was just destroyed and didn't reform it, it was just picked apart by by everybody in the surrounding countries um so but we know we're going to madripoor now I love that because I've always wanted to see how the MCU is going to handle Madripoor. Um, and, and we get a little taste of it. We get a little taste of it. So, But while they're on the plane, Zemo goes, hey, what's this? And he finds Bucky's Book of Amends. And, right. With and, his name on it. Yeah. And, and, and uh, Zemo's like, who's Nakajima? And Bucky is not happy. But what was really cool was Sam confirmed what we what, what we had heard uh, in rumors, which was that that book 
was the same that's, notebook yeah. that Steve had that he had of all the pop culture stuff that he had to catch up on. And they had a little back and forth about uh, Marvin Gaye's Troubled Man album, uh, which was which, pretty cool. He's right. It's he's an amazing, right. It's an amazing album. Yes, it's great. Um, Zuma might be a little bit out, out of line, but he's correct. <laughs> right, right. Um, so, yeah. So, and Zemo has a little a little uh, speech about the danger about heroes as we put them on pedestals, and then and and because of that we forget about their flaws, which is really cool. It's it's it, it, you know it was a nice touch, and he's right, um, but it, it it kind of highlights the gray, you know, the gray area in things. So, and then he gives a little bit of a background about Madripoor, you know, pirate nation from the 1800s that kept its lawless ways. And for those of us who are comics fans, you know, we know, we know a lot about Madripoor because it's just kind of like, uh, it's the worst part of any city with the dive bar, except it's the whole place. (laughs) Right. (laughs) So, and the lowest of the low is low town, which is where we actually, have to go and and so Zemo's like well we can't walk in as ourselves so Bucky has to be the Winter Soldier again uh he can actually go in as Baron Zemo <laughs> there's no sure. issue there but he, he, Sam he kind of fits in there. yeah Sam has to go in as Smiling Tiger uh who is which was the weirdest callback on this like, yes do you even, do you ever even look in a comic? Because that's a Thunderbolts character, isn't it? Uh, I think at one point it was a Thunderbolts character, but it was a minor villain, like right. a, you know, just a villain with like a mutate with with feral abilities and and whatnot. Um, but okay, um, and you know, he basically makes a comment that, oh, you know, I look like a pimp, and I think. That was a callback to when they introduced Sam in the comics. He was actually introduced as Snap Wilson. And oh, okay. yeah, and he was actually all in purple and green uh, in his outfits. That very <laughs> so they... stereotypical 70s <clears throat> uh, right. just yeah, so I think I think it was a little bit of a callback to that. They they did that on um, the Luke Cage show on Netflix. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that one shot of him looking in the in the it, the window of a car and go, "You look like a damn fool." With the yellow and the yeah, yeah, it, yeah. The headband and yep. everything. Like, yeah. <laughs> so, um, and then you know, and Zemo's like, "Well, whatever happens, stay in character." Okay, which again, we should have seen as some foreshadowing, but <laughs> but uh, all right. So they're getting ready to walk into Low Town. And the scene changes back to the GRC camp. And Carly is there. And this is in uh, Riga, I believe. Um, yeah. and, and Carly is there. And and somebody says, there's not much time. You have to be with her now. And I'm going, well, with who? Is it her mom? Is it her sister? You know, what? what is it? And then we go back to Madripoor. <laughs> so they kind of leave us hanging there a little bit. Um, they go back to Madripoor and um, they, you know, they're they're on the bridge. They're walking and they get an e- well, they get into the car and they get an escort by these bikes, and these bikes have these like boards coming up off the uh, off the back of the bikes. Did you no- did you notice that? It almost I looked saw like something on the back of the bikes, but I couldn't tell what it was. Yeah, I wasn't sure what that was all about. So, so no big deal. Uh, they, they get an escort and we go to low town and, and we go through low town and I'm just like, I'm freeze framing, trying to get like what's on the, what's on the walls. What are the names of the places and whatnot? So we see I two, love the look of it. It looks they, great. They the, yeah. They do the pan over of all the, uh, of all the, uh, the lights and everything, all the neon. And it actually, for me, felt like a shutter around scene. Yes. Yes. And, and actually I was thinking Blade Runner too. A little yeah. Blade Runner in that, so, um, so I freeze framed. We there was a, a bar called the Drunken Bird, which I didn't actually find anything about. Um, there was a a place called Casino Rev, uh, which I didn't find anything about. There was also the Princess Bar, which we do know from the Wolverine comics. Um, okay. it, it was one of the bars he would go into often, um, and 
the brass right, monkey. He's supposed to have been like he he has ties with Madripoor as well. Oh yes, yes. So because when when Wolverine took on the Patch persona, persona, he was it was all in Madripoor. Okay. Um, and but also he was in Madripoor for his uh, ninja stuff as well. Right. So uh, so the princess bar is where he would usually hang out. Um, and we go into the Brass Monkey, which is also from the comics, which is kind of like, um, uh, just kind of, kind of like a meeting place for the, for the low of the low, uh, basically. So, uh, and the Brass Monkey, uh, is that the, the monkey is the logo that we see in the end credits from the beginning. It's that, that kind of graffiti ish looking monkey logo. So, so they go into the Brass Monkey and uh, oh and before that though bucky's walking by the casino and then on the wall painted outside the casino is power broker is watching and okay, uh, i missed that yeah and it, and if you watch through the end credits they show like a, a little snippet of that that uh graffiti that's on the wall except it doesn't look as much like a gra- like graffiti as it, do- it does uh just a sign that says don't forget the power broker is watching. Right. <laughs> um, so I'm watching you was asking. Exactly. <laughs> Always watching. Right. So they walk into the bar and people start recognizing Bucky immediately. Just going, hey, is that the Winter Soldier? It's like, yep. He's kind of a known face for this type of area, right? Yes, yes. Because again, Hydra bad maybe, guys. Maybe maybe a little <laughs> bit of a celebrity status. Right. Right. So. Uh, they, they know they have to find Selby and the, the bartender recognizing Sam as smiling tiger, which he, look, they show him a picture of, of who smiling tiger actually looks like. And, and Sam can pass for, for smiling tiger, but, uh, it would seem weird that the bartender would recognize him, but okay. Let's no big deal. I, I think Zima actually dropped the name. Maybe he may, he may have. I, uh... It, but it, but it, I I just I, I thought yeah, that, well because the bartender said oh so you want the regular right I I think Zima dropped the name and then the guy goes oh so you want the regular and then he did the snake thing yeah which was super weird like what what was that about uh, do you, well do you know what that is like that drink no. or anything I I mean no. I don't even know what he pulled out of the snake to put into the drink <laughs> not a clue. it just uh, yeah it was weird it was like I don't know snake heart or something it just so Sam <laughs> Sam drinks it as if he's an actor that want that has to drink something he doesn't want to drink. <laughs> he just he's that's exactly it. Yeah, it's exactly it. So um uh but but also we get to find out that uh Madripoor basically is run by the power broker um at this point. So they're they're asking about Selby and the bartender's going uh you know uh, she's busy uh, blah 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 and Zemo goes okay because somebody some you can tell the crowd is getting antsy about it and Zemo just goes okay uh, Bucky attack <laughs> he makes him go into Winter Soldier mode and Bucky just goes not so on people in that bar uh and as you know the fight moves on and everything all of a sudden the bar just everybody in the bar cocks their guns it's again it's a trope but but it was really effective here and so everybody stops cold all the guns get cocked and then selby will see you now okay it really didn't take like he's right. It really did not take Bucky that long to be like, okay, I'm full on. Oh yeah, yeah. But it must have been really, really good to get that and get that out of the system. Yeah, no kidding. So what I thought was really interesting is they they moved to one of those uh, slow motion walks to meet with Selby, and they've got Edith PF playing in the background, and it's all like. Okay, and they're walking by like stacks of money on tables and weapons and and everything, where it's clearly not a good place. But, um, oh, and they, I don't know. I think it's fine. <laughs> yeah. a, little, a little decoration, a little some wall treatments. You know, it's all right. about location. Right. 
So they finally meet up with Selby and uh, immediately you get the sense that she's skeptical about Sam being Smiling Tiger. Just, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and then, but Zemo says the right thing and basically says, tell me what you know about the super soldier serum and you can have him. And he basically gestures to winter soldier and, and all the codes to control him. Um, now one, one thing about, uh, Selby is there is a Suzanne Selby in, in Marvel comics that has a tie to, uh, Madripoor. And she becomes okay. the star brand uh, a little bit later uh, huh. after, after her Madripoor days. I don't know if it's the same Selby. Might not be. It hardly matters because once they get their information, she's yeah. a well, dead person. Not, <laughs> yeah, so it's not the same Selby. Or <laughs> well, if it was, it's an ex Selby. Ex Selby, right. So um, we find out that. Uh, Dr. Wilfred Nagel is responsible for the super serum. And that's cool, except then Sam's cell phone rings. And and I kind of hate this scene, to be perfectly honest with you. But his yeah, cell, it, it but, wasn't great. But they had to figure a way to blow their cover, right? So Sam's cell phone rings. It's his sister. And Selby's going, cool, answer it on speaker. <laughs> well, if they didn't blow their cover, they could have just walked out of there with, uh, you know. Uh, right. Well, no, they couldn't walk out because then they would be walking out without Winter Soldier. Right. So, yeah, I guess yeah. Right, they had to blow their cover. Yeah, so, so he answers the call and it's all going okay. He's kind of covering for it until she goes, Sam, can I call you back later? <laughs> And Selby's just like going, what? Kill them. And then they immediately kill Selby. And immediately, like within 20 seconds, everybody's cell phone gets hit with a bounty on them. Was it like a thousand bitcoins or something like that? I, I, I don't know. I thought it was... I thought it was more than that. I thought it was more than that. It, but but it, was, it was a lot. Um... Because I did freeze frame on it, and I wanted, I thought it was like 150,000 or something like that. I, all I saw was BK. Yeah, yeah. So everybody starts chasing them. <laughs> like, like they're running, they're running down the street, and there's like people are shooting at them the entire time, and they run into this alley. And it's like, okay, what's gonna happen? And then people chasing them get picked off one at a time from from somebody shooting from a window well there was the first shot right there was the 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 very first one yep um and as soon as that happened i went oh hi sharon oh did you really i did yeah. not i did not well because i knew she was showing up either this episode or next episode right um so i figured if they're gonna bring her in this is a good way to do it so she's over she's overwatch and she does a really good job at overwatch yep um uh, and, and, and as soon as the first person went down from a sniper shot, I was like, oh, it's Sharon. Right. So, yeah, they were, so enter Sharon Carter. Uh, there's a, you know what's funny? I, I did freeze frame on this, too. There was a, a sign in the alley that said Augmentations Corporal, Corporealis, um, which I wasn't sure what it actually meant, and I didn't, I actually didn't research it yet. But um, I, it was just an odd sign that made me, wonder what was going on so so sharon they're talking to sharon and she goes well look i didn't have the avengers to back me up so i'm off the grid in madripoor i had to go on the run uh even though she helped sam and cap and you know and and everybody during civil war she had to stay hidden because she wasn't part of the avengers um so i so she's definitely uh disgruntled no no question about it um so they're talking and she's like i've got a place in high town where you guys can hide and she's just not happy about it and they get they he uh with sharon is is being asked about nagel and she said yeah he works for the power broker 
yeah, no problem. Um, and Sam, Sam's like, well, look, let, help us, and I can clear your name. I'll, I'll get you a pardon, and, and we'll clear your name. And Sharon reluctantly agrees, because uh, I think she just doesn't trust that he'll be able to do that. But Sure. And then we go to Hightown, which Sharon has a place for. And I, I this has also made me wonder... If she if she has a place in High Town, why is she running in Low Town? Well, that's where the business is. But if well, you have the money, you live. You don't live in the trash heap when you got to work there. Well, but but remember though, when so when they when they go to her place in High Town, she also runs kind of like an illegal art gallery, a high end illegal art gallery. Yeah, and I, I bet you anything, a lot of those contacts would be from Low Town. Yeah, you're probably right. You're probably right. Um, so, and, and the buyer, and, the buyer would be from high town. Yes. The contact would be from low town. That's true. That's true. And what, what's funny is Sam, his naive and naive, naivety or na, 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 naivety. He's naive. Let's just say that he's naive. Uh, <laughs> because like Zemo's going, yeah, most of the stuff in museums isn't the real thing. The real stuff is really held in, in places like this. And and Sam starts Googling, apparently. <laughs> He's going, huh. Wow. Okay. okay you guys are right. <laughs> right. <laughs> so. What was the, there was a movie about the, I don't remember which one it was anymore. It was an old one that basically did, did the same thing with the. Um, oh. Never mind. I, I can't think yeah. of the painting and I can't think of the movie. Yeah, but it but it definitely is one of those where they where it was they with sh- the Mona Lisa. It it was it was with the Mona Lisa, but I don't remember which, which movie it was. Right. Um. So. Share. So they're at the the at the art gallery where we have a scene of, uh, well, it's at, it's an art gallery slash like, club atmosphere, um, and we see. Zemo. dancing <laughs> yeah that's weird <laughs> and not very well <laughs> it, was, it was just so weird um so uh sharon basically says okay we uh i i, I know where nagel is uh and we gotta go and they go to a shipyard and he's in container 4261 and they open it it's empty because of course there's a secret door um which I re- I really like that part because you you don't see a lot of secret secret hidden bases in a shipping container. Exactly, exactly. Um, so, but but so they they find so they find his lab. They find Nagel in, the, in his lab, and and Sharon's outside. Kind of, so the three guys go inside to find Nagel. Sharon's staying outside to keep an eye on things. They're questioning Nagel. And uh, Nagel explains he was brought in to continue Hydra's work after the five failed test subjects in Siberia, who I'm still trying to figure out who those were. Right. Because they made a point of saying um, Siberia. It's not... Uh, I think it's the guys that, that Zemo had in uh, Civil War. The, the guys that were in, in, the, in the cases. Oh, Okay. Well, I would see immediately. I started thinking. Well, maybe Red Guardian is part of that, and and uh, could be. Yeah. So, uh, but but again, he said five failed test subjects. So, um, but then when Hydra fell, the CIA picked him up, and said they had blood samples from an American test subject, which is right. obviously Isaiah. Yeah. And they confirmed that later, but. Um, Nagel talks about he optimized it and perfected it. You don't have to have a jacked up body anymore. It or these giant machines, it's subtle, it's optimized, it's perfected. And before Nagel was able to complete his work, he got blipped. And then when he came back, the super soldier program had been uh, on fit, ice on ice basically. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's so bad. Um, so, <laughs> thank you, thank you. yeah, I'll be here all week. Yeah, so it was put on ice, and and Nagel went to Madripoor and was funded to continue his research research by the power broker. And so he was able to make twenty vials 
of the super soldier serum and Carly stole all 20. Right. And we know she already used at least eight. Uh, I was going to say, I thought it was seven, but, but it could be, it could be eight. Um, Okay, uh, but but still seven or eight, which means we got twelve or thirteen to go. Right, um, right. And uh, Carly calls Nagel and asks her to help with help Donya Madani, which is the woman Carly was with, who right. who had so, tuberculosis. Right. So the the first time we saw, because uh, I I kind of figured that's what she's on, because uh, when we see her the first time in an episode. When they say you don't, and she doesn't have a lot of time left, she does walk through. The scene is basically she just walks through and she goes sits right by the bedside. Right, right. So when they showed that, I was like, oh, she was, you know, she was stealing these. My guess was that she's, you know, from that shot. Now I didn't guess it before, but from that shot of her sitting by the bedside of somebody and like, oh, she wants to give him the, the, the formula to see if it helps. But she has probably did it. But she has all the formula. That's the thing. She has all the vials. That's right, why I, I'm I don't. It just didn't work. Maybe, yeah. So maybe she did try and it didn't work. But oh, and while all this is happening, they're talking to Nagel. They're having the conversation. Sharon is outside, fighting off all the bounty hunters that have found them. Which well, she did tell them. <laughs> well, yeah, she, she's telling them the whole time, and I'm just going right. Like, how about a couple of you guys go out and help her? <laughs> you know. Yeah, you know the three the three men inside Big questioning the dude, types. right? <laughs> right, and 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 she's outside just going, okay, I guess I'm taking care of these guys. Um, so they so they they get they get done. Um, Zemo kills Nagel, just executes him, just executes him, and. So they so they leave. Uh, Sharon is 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 saying, "Hey, we're we're out of time." Uh, Zemo kills Nagel, and then a rocket launcher gets fired at the lab by one of the bounty hunters. And and it looks like like this is the perfect spot, right? I I thought that he's basically just gone. Yes, because Zemo gets separated from from Sam and, and Bucky, and and it look, it's like okay, Zemo's gone. Uh, it's a perfect opportunity. Uh, and more bounty hunters show up, and then all of a sudden, Zemo returns with his mask on and starts taking out people. He's just, like, taking out the bounty hunters, and they're running. Zemo goes, oh, hey, and he finds a car in one of the shipping containers. <laughs> supercharged. A supercharged car, right? <laughs> so uh, they take off. And Sharon goes her own way, and she basically says, just give me that pardon. And the weird part was that Sharon's driver happened to just, like, be hanging out. Yeah. <laughs> now. So she's uh, she's definitely set up. She, she's she got stuff going on there. She's got, she's got some power that she's, that she's wielding in that area. Yeah. She's definitely got money. So she might not be she might not want to be leaving that area even with the pardon. Right. So so I just wonder cuz we didn't actually see how they got there. Yeah. To the, to the shipyard, right? So maybe they all rode in Sharon's car to get there. That's a possibility. And, or they and, met her there and they didn't see that she had a driver. Exactly, exactly. So um all right. So Sharon Sharon's driver shows up and she goes, "Hey, we've got a, we've got a big problem, actually a couple of them." And and then that's it. And we go back to Carly in in uh, in Latvia. Now, the we got a big problem thing could be any number of things, right? I mean, she sure. could be she could be talking about Nagel, she could be talking about just Bucky and and Sam being there. Um all kinds of issues. Well, did she didn't she mention did she mention that Nagel's dead? No, I don't think I don't think she did okay. on the phone. Um, so uh, so but we're back to Carly and Carly refers to the woman as Mama Danya. So clearly either an adopted mother or you know mother type or um, 
just that's what she, what she's called, but um, she's clearly dying or dead at that point. Um, and then they start talking about the serum, and and Carly's like, "Yeah, so we want to make sure the kids in the camps have the serum." And I'm going, "Oh, that's a terrible idea. Why would you? Yeah. <laughs> why would you give super soldier serum to the kids? That's not good." Um, so she finds out she finds out that Nagel is dead, and that and she and she mentions that to the dude, the other flag smasher oh, that okay. she was talking to. That, that's the spot that I remember. Yeah, yeah, and and then she goes. So the power broker is going to come begging because he knows that we've got the last of the serum. Now I think that's being naive, but um, okay. So they're they're across. Well, the it, it, it kind of makes sense, right? If she stole all of it, she's right. got the last batch of it. But I don't think he's going to come begging. Begging, I think he's going to come gunning. Well, the the thing is, right? Do you suppose the power broker is only the power broker because of the super soldier serum? Oh, God, no. Right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, so um, yeah, we'll, we'll see how that all works out. But... Um, so they're across the street from a GRC building because apparently the GRC is everywhere at this point. And we get a, we get a, a scene change to Cap and Battlestar. They're still in, in Germany. And they basically are going to go after Sam and Bucky for breaking Zemo out. They find out that Zemo is, is, is done. And this is another indicator of John Walker going off the rails. Because he's talking to Lamar and saying, "Hey, um, so we're gonna go, we're gonna go after them, uh, but it's gonna be off the books." Well, <laughs> Steve probably wouldn't do that. <laughs> yeah. Well. <laughs> right. So, uh, so fine. Uh, Sam calls Torres and and find to find out what he can about uh, Donya Madani, which is what what her name is, and. Finds out she's dead, and uh, Sam's kind of reflecting on things in general. He basically says, "Yeah, that American." T he called him an American test subject, but it was clearly Isaiah. Um, and and he's just wondering how many people have to be steamrolled for the shield. Uh, and and he's saying maybe maybe Sam made a mistake. Maybe he should have had it destroyed. Um, and and. Sam is just clearly conflicted, right? Um, yeah, but I love the I love the reaction from from Bucky on this because he's like, "Before you do that, I'll take it from you," and you know that's not gonna go down easy. Right, right. Well, and and so, uh, but literally, Bucky just flat out says, "Hey, we need a new cap, and it's not gonna be Walker, so I'm gonna take the shield." Now, Bucky doesn't. I mean, uh, Sam doesn't fight him on that, but it. It made me wonder, and it it might change my speculation. Like I, I'm, I've been speculating that the second season of this show is going to be called Captain America and Bucky. Yeah, maybe. And but it's going to be with Bucky and Sam. Now, it could be that it's not called that. It's called Captain America and the Falcon, which is what the comics uh. were for a while um right but in the comics i mean sam does have the shield i mean bucky didn't have the shield as well but right i don't know i mean we'll see where it has because we know this one's multiple seasons yes yes so um so yeah we know that uh madani is dead we get a little sh a little shot of uh, a, a pendant that she has which appears to have the flag smashers logo on it the one world, one people logo, uh, and and there we we see the flag smashers taking down the GRC and taking supplies so that they can redistribute them to people in the camps, which is all you know very Robin Hoody and okay uh, cool, um, and yeah, then because we get the line we get the line from Carly saying you guys had six months worth of supplies and in people this need one it building. now yeah yeah. Yeah, and that makes sense. Yeah, and so they leave. The, they you know they do what they need to do, get the supplies. They leave the building, 
and Carly says, hey, uh, I'm going to jump in your car. And, and they go to drive off, and her car explodes because Carly obviously set her car up as a car bomb and takes out people in the building. And she, so yeah. she, she, so, cro- she crossed the line, basically. Um, yeah, because that's the first line of her saying you had six months worth of supplies here. I go, okay, and she's not really the bad guy. They're, they're getting the materials for people that need it. And then she pulls this, and I go, well, okay, she's, she's either completely screwed up or, you know. Well, she just went. She she just crossed the line to full on terrorist at that yeah, point, right? So, um, so we switch back to Bucky and Sam and Zemo, and Bucky basically says, "Yeah, you guys go ahead. Um, I'm gonna go on a walk." Well, we we do see him. He he sees something on the ground. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, so he he looks down and he sees something on the ground, and then he goes, "I'm gonna I'm gonna take a walk." Yep. Uh, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. And then he he wanders off. Yep. And then he looks. And these guys go into some building, and that's all we see from them, right? Because we don't right. see them for anything else once nope. they go in, inside. Yeah, that that was the last we see of them. And then and Bucky looks over on the ground, picks up a little ball. Hmm. That looks a little familiar. Yep. And and then he walks around the corner and finds another one, which looks really familiar. Oh, and I it, missed the second one. Yeah, it was I on didn't the corner. the second one. Yeah, it okay. was on the corner of a building, as if it was planted for him to find. Um, sure. And because it was, uh, it was. <laughs> and he's standing there, and then he hears with his super hearing or, or whatever. He goes, "Oh, you dropped something!" And he turns around, and who's there but Io from or Ao from the Dora Milaje, uh Basically saying, in Wakandan, I'm here for Zemo. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> obviously they found out. And that, that is such a good crossover connection. I really want to see where this goes. Well, because, yeah, well, and they and they foreshadowed it, right? Because the Wakandans haven't forgotten that Zemo is responsible yeah. for K- King T'Chaka's dead, death. Um, so... Um, yeah, it's uh, but it, it's really good. Uh, I I really wish it was a Koye instead of Ao, but um, yeah, but, but that's but, that's a little too big of a name to put in the, for the show. Yeah, and she's probably filming Walking Dead or something. <laughs> so. Or or you know Black Panther two. Well, there's that. Well, I think Ao would be in Black Panther two as well. Yeah, but that's a smaller character that you can have go away and, sh- and record stuff for a TV show, meanwhile. That's true. That's true. So, uh, but either way, that that's it. And Like she says, I'm here for Zemo, and then roll credits. I mean, it's it's uh, it was a nice uh, cliffhanger. And we get to see what happens and what kind of support we get from Wakanda, if any. Um, so it feels like we're building up a team for a final battle. Is kind of what it's looking like to me, but yeah. Um, so, overall impressions of the episode for you? I uh, I thought the fight scene was great. I thought the the shots of um, Majapur and the stuff in the uh, in the bar were really well done. Uh, I I missed the part at the beginning. I liked it in the first two episodes where you get that simple opening of. You know, the first one was him ironing the shirt. The second one was unzipping the, the suit. We don't get that in this in this one, and I kind of miss that. Yeah, we um, don't. Yep. I was hoping they would keep that as like a connection, connecting tissue <laughs> between episodes. We get the creepy uh, <laughs> global yeah, repatriation creepy commercial. commercial. <laughs> yeah. Um, overall, I I think I think I like the previous one better, but over like the entire story is great. Yeah, uh, I think I like the previous episode a little better than this one. I do too. Just for the stuff. Yeah. But Sher- Sharon was great. They did a wonderful job with her. Um, I'm very happy to see her back in that in action. And this, I mean, this was a good connection episode, right? Yeah. It's it's, it's going to connect us to the to the last half of the series, and and I think right. That... And it's it's everybody who's not the main two guys that gets to shine in this one. Right, because Sharon gets to be the big bad, you know, big badass for the fight, and uh, uh, and then Zemo is just like, holy crap, he can handle. 
and the chemistry between Zemo and Sam and Bucky was awesome. <laughs> it was just really so well. good. Surprisingly it, well together. <laughs> yep. So, all right. Speculation time. I've got three major questions. Okay. Uh, one, John Walker. I think he's already enhanced. Did they? They said something about Power Broker when he, him, and Battlestar were talking, didn't they? Yeah, but um, but the, but just as a name, like they, he didn't he didn't know him. I mean, it's, it wasn't clear that he knew him, but okay. So I I think he's secretly enhanced. I'm not sure yeah. even Battlestar knows. I I'm getting kind of a same feeling because he's completely artificially created hero, and he's too good with the shield. Yeah. So so there's that. Um, the bigger question is, who do you think is the power broker? Oh, that one, like, I know that's all speculation. <laughs> I have no clue at all. So you want to hear what I've heard for theories? Go for it. Okay. Arnim Zola. Okay. Wait, was wasn't Zola still? No, wait. So Who Zola, was in the computer. Yes, Zola was in the computer. In in. Okay, uh, so it could okay. Yeah, but that but that computer was destroyed. He, yes, right. he but he could have Ultroned out. A program. <laughs> right. Yeah, he's a program. Right. So so. And 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 some credence could be given to that theory based on how quickly the bounty was put out on those guys. Yeah, like okay. like literally as as quickly as Selby was was uh, <laughs> killed, it you know it it was everybody was texted, so, um, I, I I personally I don't know that I'm buying into that. Um, I kind of think that it might be just a brand new person. Um, now here is some really weird meta stuff. So in the comics, at one point, Power Broker was a was a corporation, and okay. was Power Power Broker Inc., and was and still the t- same type of thing, you know, giving powers to people for for money. Um, it was run by an individual named Curtis Jackson. Okay. So if they wanted to go really weird and cool and meta. Curtis Jackson is the real name of 50 Cent. Oh, really? <laughs> so, you, oh if, my god, they could bring 50, they could bring 50 Cent in and he would for a he cameo. would he would fit into that role. He would he absolutely really. fit into that role. And it would be this weird meta thing. I don't think it's going to happen, but I think that was just fun to 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 think about. Um um, but it, it, like one of my serious thoughts was, there's been some speculation that uh, the power broker could be Thaddeus Ross. Hmm. I don't think so. I don't, I, I, I don't buy that one. He's a little too by the book. Um. Yeah, but he also hates. He hates the elevation of the heroes. You know, I think. Right, but you, I, I don't see him going off. To a degree that he's, you know, in Medjapur running this criminal thing. I, I would tend to agree with you. Um, yeah. However, if you think about maybe the power broker is in charge of the GRC as well. That, that actually makes a little more sense. And, and by extension, he's in charge of Cap. Right. So one of the things that we've seen in the credits, and it could be Senator Atwood. Okay. And Senator Atwood had ties to Hydra and is kind of behind the scenes and was in charge of writing some of the some of the legislation to control the heroes. That one I could go with. Yeah, so uh or it could be just somebody that we haven't seen yet. Which I'd also which be is, which is most more than likely. And so I was I was uh talking with uh, Phil Keating 
about uh, speculation about if we went with an independent, you know, a, a different actor for for the power broker. Um, in my mind, when I view the power broker, I it's someone who has control over a lot of information, a lot of tech, and is also really an imposing figure. I think the power broker has to be kind of a, a big person. Um, not not kingpin big, but, you know, just big. Um, sure. And so the two names that we kind of came up with uh, were Dolph Lundgren. Oh, for actors. Yeah, for actors. For af- actors, not the actual... Not, 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 <laughs> we're not crossing that, that line. Um, Having golf would be pretty freaking cool. Yeah, and or if they gender flip it, Gwendolyn Christie. Oh, I don't know that one. Uh, she played... Uh, she was in Game of Thrones. She was the, she was the basically the, the knight. The but the, the oh okay yeah, uh, she hung out mm, with Jamie, Jamie Lannister. That would be a good one because she's actually, I mean, it's Captain Phasma. Uh, yes, yes, so she she's definitely <laughs> got the, you know, the stature, the physique to to be that intimidating type of character. Yes, yeah, that'd so, be pretty cool. So, and then the other part of the speculation which is actually my third question. So let me start. Well, the, the speculation has been maybe Sharon is actually the power broker. Uh, that actually, I wouldn't, I wouldn't hate that idea, especially because we see her go off at the end like that. Like, you know, we had a problem. I kind of hate that idea. Power bro- I, I, <laughs> I kind of hate it because I like her as a good guy. Yeah, so do I. And um, frankly, she doesn't, I haven't. She does. She hasn't come across as evil I, enough. I don't think. I don't think she's the power broker again because, like, like you said, because she's not evil enough. But I think she's way more connected and knows more about it than, you know, than we get from that one episode. Well, so the so the the other part of that is, you know, so the so the actual question about Sharon is, is she a good guy or a bad guy, and 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 obviously there's a gray area there. And we've seen it because she helped, but um, she could be working for the for the power broker. Yeah, that would not surprise me. And that phone call where she said we've got a couple of problems, it could have been with the power broker. Right. Well, she's supposed to be in four episodes. Although this, this yeah, well three, that that three, that would make four, sense. Five, yeah, 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 it would. So she, yeah, she's she's gonna be in every episode for the rest of the show, which makes perfect um, sense. Yeah. Unfortunately, so, where where what was his name? What was the Isaiah Bradley? Yeah, Isaiah Bradley. That's the name I was looking Carl, for. Carl Lumley is the actor. Yeah, he's only he's only in one episode. Unfortunately. Oh no! Oh. Yeah. Oh, and that's I'm, a I'm missed opportunity. Of, yeah, I'm just going off of IMDb. So. I'm, so that might be updated if he comes back in later episodes. Oh, that's a bummer. Um, yeah, I, w- I would like to see him uh, them use him more. Because he's he's an excellent actor. That is a great story. Uh, and that could be that could be more of a second season thing, too. Could be. Could be. Um, man, that's too bad. I, I was really kind of hoping to see him take an active part at the end. But um, so uh, any any speculation that you that you, you've been thinking about? about the show lately uh i think i think he gets her the pardon or he has some serious problem problems trying to get her the pardon but he at least tries his best uh i can see him getting the pardon for her and her kind of working both sides yep uh not not in, not wanting to come back in the fold and kind of so to speak and uh i think she's definitely way closer connected to the power broker than than she's letting on Yep. And uh, yeah, I think like the the shot from the previews of the show that we had with Sam throwing the shield, I don't think we're getting that till like the very last episode. I think I think you're right. I think you're right. Um, so here's the out of left field speculation that I think likelihood is less than five percent. <laughs> uh, we're in Madripoor. 
what I desperately wanted to see was Hugh Jackman sitting at the bar with a patch over one oh, eye. God. And 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 but but I I wanted to see that, but I didn't want them to recognize him or say anything. I just wanted to see him in the background. Well, you know they're not going to use him for that role anymore, right? <laughs> well, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't think he's coming back as Wolverine. Yeah, I I think I I you might be right. You might be right. But I think it would be it would have been fun to even see a character that looks like the the Wolverine look, you know, sitting at the bar, I thought I thought that would have been fun. So, all right, man, I think that I, I, I agree on that one though. That 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 would be pretty cool, kind of like what we got from uh, from the X Men movie for that little one. Little it, play. Yes, yes, exactly. Um, so, uh, I think I think that kind of wraps things up. Do you have anything more for this episode? No, I think we're all set. All right. So, Sen, tell them where they can find you. Uh, you can find me on twitch.tv slash senraven every morning, uh, 8.30 a.m. Pacific time for Marvel Strike Force stream. And uh, doing a little bit of other stuff like Outriders and a couple of other games, usually in the evenings. It's a little hard for me to do an evening stream, but every now and then I get I'm, I manage to do it. Sure. Cool. And I am on Twitter and Twitch at VO by Kurt on Mondays and Thursdays doing Strike Force on uh, my own channel, VO by Kurt, as well as uh, From the Helicarrier. And on Thursday evenings, also doing Nook's Tavern, uh, all about Animal Crossing New Horizons. My solo podcast of Storytime with Kurt, uh, which is found at anchor.fm slash Storytime with Kurt. Uh, where we just started uh, the eighth book, I think, that we've done so far, and the fifth book in the Tom Swift series. And you can go and listen to that. And obviously right here on VO by Kurt doing This Week in MCU, which you can find pretty much wherever you find your podcasts. Uh, if you want to watch us live, come back here, twitch.tv slash by Kurt, 10 a.m. Eastern Time, 7 a.m. Pacific. And uh, you can be in the audience for Twitch, and we will ignore you while we're recording this and talk to you afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, we will see you guys next week. Have a good one. Bye. Stop recording. All right. And uh, I can actually look in the chat room because I didn't have a chance. Uh, no, we didn't have anybody. I thought we... <laughs> so I heard it... Uh, there was a, a couple of people here. Back and I, heard, forth. I heard a bling. Like at the beginning. Oh, really? Like, oh, that uh, was me hosting. Oh, it was? I, I <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, in, the, in the user... And Ra Raj is hanging out. So hi, Raj. Hey, Raj. Uh, I see Abbott Costello, probably a bot. Casino Thanks, probably a bot. Crazy OQ, Extra More, FTO Pair, I think it's a bot. Glamours, Go With Him, I think it's a bot. Have This Too, Joint Effort, Lurks, I think Lurks might be a bot. Uh, Raj is like definitely a bot. bot. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. so, 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 so am I. Uh, hey, Raj. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. I think that'll that'll do it for today. Uh, once again, fun show. I, I actually do like breaking it down and, and talking about just different aspects of it. Um, what's interesting, we got three more episodes, and then I think it's another two-week break before... I think so. Uh, let me check on Is that. Is it uh, what, though, that's next? Or what it, if... It might be... Marvel Disney Plus lineup. Here we go. Hopefully this has dates attached to it. Falcon Winter Soldier. We have the premiere already. Loki premieres. Yeah, Loki is June 11th. June 11th. What if is... And what if it's just that summer? Oh, okay, so Loki's next, which means that's a pretty good gap. Yeah, because we got basically the 8th, the 15th, and the 22nd. So there's nothing in May. Because it was supposed was because, to be it was supposed to be yeah, Black Widow. Yep. Yeah, uh, on the 7th. So that was supposed to be Black Widow. 
and now it's not till July. Well, maybe we can come up with something. Yeah. Maybe. maybe uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll maybe we'll come up with something. Uh, I was kind of hoping Black Widow we'd be able to capitalize on, but because it was really supposed to be like every two weeks something new. Yeah. Uh, or two weeks after after the last one was supposed to be something new. Although, what if it's gonna have twenty three episodes? Oh wow! It's a full. It's actually a full season. So That's I didn't realize cool. that. That is really cool. And the cool thing, you know what? Maybe we save this talk for one of those in between episodes. Yeah. Speculation about the series coming up. Oh, that'd be good. Yeah. yeah, okay. So maybe we'll speculate about uh, What If, and then we'll speculate about Loki, and maybe Hawkeye. Oh, I'm looking Even forward to that Even though Hawkeye's 2022. So, oh, is that far yeah, away? It is. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, but we but for like movies this year, though, we have uh, Black Widow and Shang-Chi. Right. So, all right. Cool, cool, cool. All right, I'm gonna. I got you. Got stuff to do. I got stuff to do. Thank you guys for joining us in the stream. We'll see you next week. See ya. Bye. Y'all.